All right, so today we're learning about input and output. And when we talk about input and output, we want to convert any uh, liquids that we have into milliliters. So on the right side here, everything is already in milliliters. So all we need to do is add them together. And we get 2,225 milliliters for output. But on the left side, we have cups, we have ounces, and then we have one that's in milliliters. So for part one, I want to add all the cups together, one plus two plus one quarter, and that's 13 quarter cups. So we have 13 quarter cups per like one person or just one the right person for this part. And then in every cup, there are eight ounces per cup. And there are 30 milliliters per one ounce. So canceling cups with cups and ounces with ounces leaves us with milliliters, which is what we want. I'm not gonna keep this one person stuff. So we get 13 over four times eight times 30 which is 780 milliliters. Part two would be adding the ounces together. So 10 plus four ounces is 14 to one. And then we have 30 milliliters per one ounce again. Cancel these units. And we are left with 420 milliliters. And then our last step is to add our 780, 420, and the 600, I should highlight that, 600 milliliters. So that we get a total of 1,800 milliliters for intake or input. Once again, we're going to convert anything on this left side into milliliters and add it all up. But on the right side, everything is already in milliliters. So we'll add those first for a total of 2,170 milliliters. And on the right, the thing that sticks out to me most is this half pint. So one conversion that you might not know, and I'll write it off on the side here, is that one pint is the same thing as two cups. So if we have a half pint, that's really just one cup. So now that we know that, we can add this one cup together with these. So our part one will be two plus one plus one is four cups. And in every one cup is eight ounces. And there are 30 milliliters per one ounce. So canceling units, we get 960 milliliters. And now all that we have to do next is add these two together. So for part two, we'll take our 960, we'll add 450 and 225. And this gives us 1,635 milliliters. Okay, so that's it for input and output.
All right, so now we're going to do some calculating of dosages for medicine that patients might need. And um, all we're doing is dimensional analysis or unit cancellation. So for number one, we, need, we have a patient who needs 1,250 milligrams of acetaminophen, and all we have on hand are 500 milligrams of acetaminophen per tablet. So we'll set this up as 1,250 milligrams per one person, or just one. We don't need the person part, but I'll do it for this first step. And in every one tablet, there are 500 milligrams. Now I set it up this way so that we get cancellation with milligrams. And this becomes 2.5 tablets per person. But we just care about how much, how many tablets. So next, we have an order for 165 milligrams IV of medication, and all we have are 55 milligrams per 1.1 milliliters. So we need 165 milligrams. We have 1.1 milliliters for every 55 milligrams. Milligrams will cancel here and here so that we get 3.3 milliliters. Okay, these ones aren't so bad. Here's a few more examples. So number one here, we have 0.3 milligrams that we need for one person. And all we have on hand are two milliliters per 1,000 micrograms. So notice we can't cancel this milligrams with these micrograms. They're not the same unit. And we want our answer in milliliters here. So we need another fraction to use, like the relationship we have where there are 1,000 micrograms per every one milligram. Now that we have that, we can cancel milligrams here and here, micrograms here, and even these 1,000s cancel so that we're only left with 0.6 milliliters. Okay, number two, 10 the whatevers of medication for one person, and we have 10 milliliters for every 25 MEQs. This one's a pretty straightforward conversion because we just canceled those. Our answer is already in milliliters and we get four milliliters. Okay, number three, 35 milligrams per person, and we have 1.2 milliliters for every 45 milligrams. Cancel those guys, and this gives us 0.93 milliliters. And now remember our rounding rules, anything less than one, we keep two decimal places. Anything more than one milliliter, we keep one decimal. Just something to remember. Now we have 700 milligrams. And on hand we have 2.3 milliliters per 1,000 milligrams. So again, we can just cancel those, and we get 1.61 milliliters, but because of our rounding rules, we'll keep 1.6. And lastly, 35 milligrams, and we have one tablet, and each tablet has 10 milligrams. So we're not answering this one in milliliters, but instead in tablets, because that makes the most sense. So that would be 3.5 tablets. And that looks a little bit messy. There we go.